guess, first of all, it was when I was about like seven or eight, um, my mum's partner, before she met him, had had um, throat cancer and it had gone away, but then it came back again a couple of times and um, he was sort of in hospital a few times quite a bit. Um, so, like, my mum obviously was, like, going to the hospital to visit him a lot and so I didn't really think about it at the time, but I was sort of obviously had a bit more, like, responsibility and stuff at home. Um, but when I think I, I properly, like, recognised still not at the time, but later on, um, that I became a young carer was when I was about 13. Um, and he passed away, sadly. And then, like, a couple of years later, my mum started getting ill. Um, and first of all, it was just little things, like she couldn't move around, like, as easily as normal. And she sort of just had, like, aches and pains and stuff. And it just slowly got worse and worse, really. Um, and eventually she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So she was in and out of hospital and sort of I basically had to do a lot of stuff at home like do a lot of the cooking go out and do the food shopping and stuff and um like obviously help her like get up out of bed and stuff in the morning and it was just like just what happened really at home. When my mum sort of got ill enough for it to be noticed by like social services and stuff I was sort of 15 nearly 16 so I was in that really weird age group which is like sort of almost an adult in the eyes of like social services and the law but not quite and my mum got a social worker and my younger brother got a social worker because he got in trouble in school and had stuff going on and whatever and I didn't I didn't get any help because everyone just sort of I don't know they assumed I was doing fine because I sort of seemed like I was managing so I just I was just yeah I was miserable for a really long time and like in school no one talks about like depression or mental health or anything I mean, they don't even talk about, like, happiness or mental well-being or how to, like, be well and look after yourself at all. And obviously, a lot of people will think, oh, but that's your family's job. I didn't tell my mum about how I was feeling or any of the other problems I had going on because I didn't want to worry her. The government needs to have more sort of awareness in schools for kids' mental well-being because so much is about attainments and tests and, it, like, achieving a certain percentage. But there's not enough about actually looking after the welfare of the kid. The systems and education that seem to think that young people have family around them who will support them with that side of growing up. And loads of people, for loads of different reasons, just don't have that. And so there needs to be something in the education system that picks that up or it does something to help. And education just needs to be more holistic and have more about like emotional education and resilience and, like, figuring out what you're good at and what you enjoy doing. And because if you'll just go to school and you're not very academic and you get told that you're like bad at tests and you've got like a D in your exam and you failed it and you did badly at that, you're just gonna be like, well, what am I supposed to do? And like, that's terrible. It's like all these people are getting written off at such a young age just because they don't fit into the little boxes. I think there needs to be more sort of counseling services offered like in schools and also sort of externally and organizations need to just work together more and like share information more and I feel like this is a problem like in society in general so if you are getting housing benefit and job seek exams because you're looking for a job like they don't talk to each other so you have to find all the stuff and then send it from one to the other so it, it goes across like the whole system. I was in the job center one day and um, a lady approached me and she was from Young Women's Trust and she told me about the Work It Out coaching service. Um, basically, um, women who are sort of like professionals working in different industries and stuff have been trained to be coaches and they will contact you however you want to be contacted. So like phone you or email or Skype or WhatsApp and talk to you about what you want to do or like what sort of is stopping you, like what your ambitions are and just like listen to you and offer sort of suggestions and advice and just help you and they the my coach um Yasmin she made me feel so much more confident such like supportive amazing group of young women my name's Jenny and I'm a freelance writer and three words I would use to describe myself are determined passionate and resilient